Well, uh, it's certainly a daunting task uh, to debate David Cunningham, who really is responsible for the adoption of this uh, treatment approach worldwide. Uh, but um, I think we need to look at the data and uh, really uh, argue whether or not radiation should be included. Um, certainly for esophageal and GE junction adenocarcinomas, I'm going to make the argument that chemotherapy and radiation is the preferred treatment. This is not gastric cancer. So in addressing this debate, we have to really look at what are the important endpoints. Key is rates of R0 resection. If you do not achieve an R0 resection, you will die of your cancer. Pathologic response is important. Perhaps even more important is achieving an N0 status and trying to reduce the risk of local tumor failure. So again, survival with surgery alone is poor. Uh, the two approaches for uh, these tumors are preoperative chemotherapy or a combination of chemotherapy and radiation, which is the most common U.S. practice. And again, both of these approaches achieve modest survival benefits of only 6 to 14 percent. Why include radiation? I'm going to make the argument that all of the important endpoints, R0, PATH-CR, N0, and local failure, all favor chemotherapy and radiation over chemotherapy alone. So what about the issue of R0 resection? Uh, so two of the largest studies of preoperative chemotherapy for esophagus and G-junction cancers actually come from, from Great Britain. Uh, uh, one was uh, the OEO5 trial comparing ECX versus CF. This was 900 patients undergoing endoscopic ultrasound staging. Many patients had laparoscopy and PET scan. And to me, this is very, very poor rates of R0 resection. This is a contemporary study. 60 to 66 percent of patients had R0. STO3, this is another British study. This treated GE junction um, uh, esophagus and gastric, asked a bevacizumab question. Uh, if you tease out the uh, GE junction esophagus patients, 680, 70 percent rate of R0 resection. So this is data on 1,700 patients with R0 rates of 60 percent. To me, that is one of the issues that almost settles the debate. These patients need radiation. FLOT4 uh, did show that FLOT was better than ECX. Uh, there was an improvement in R0 resection rates, but this was GE junction and gastric. The POET trial, which was an uh, underpowered study comparing chemotherapy alone with or without radiation, did not show a difference, but the CROSS trial comparing chemoradiation to surgery showed 92% versus 69%. This 69% looks like we got with uh, uh, chemotherapy alone in 1,700 patients treated in the UK. So this is data from the STO3 trial uh, because this actually broke down the rates of R0 resection depending on the location of the tumor. So if you're a gastric cancer, you're fine. You get 87%. If you're esophagus or type 1, again, the 60% statistic, which is what we saw with surgery alone 20 years ago. Gets a little better for GE junction and type 3s, but collectively for the esophagus and GE junction cancers, the rate of R0 resection is only 69%. Anything less than an R0 resection, you do not survive your cancer. These are data from Dave Kelson's uh, preoperative Platinum 5 FU, outcome by resection. R0, you get a cure. R1 resection, virtually everybody recurs. So if you don't get an R0 resection, you don't survive your cancer. How about salvaging these patients with chemoradiation post-op? You can do this. And actually, the Kelson trial did salvage about 20% of patients that had long-term survival if they got chemoradiation. But this is extremely poorly tolerated treatment. So yes, you can do it, but it's better to do preoperative rather than postoperative radiation. So is this poorer outcome, the low R0 with chemo, due to bad biology? I would argue no. Um, if we look at the, the uh, genome atlas data, virtually 100% of esophageal and GE junction adenocarcinomas are what we call genomically unstable tumors, very similar to gastric cancer. Indeed, 50% of gastric cancers are also genomically stable. And the good prognosis group, 20 to 30% or less, are the more favorable MSI or EBV tumors in the stomach. So arguably, gastric, GE junction, and esophageal cancers are quite genomically similar. It's the anatomy, not the biology, that dictates that radiation is needed. 
So path CR rates, uh, if we look at chemotherapy alone, uh, ECF was better than platinum 5-FU, FLOT was better than ECF, but we get consistently higher rates of pathologic CR with chemoradiation uh, 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 followed by surgery. So what about N0 status? Um, so for ECX, in these contemporary trials, about 40% of patients were uh, node negative, uh, maybe an improvement to almost 50% for FLOT, but in the chemoradiation trials, it's 65 to 68%. So higher rates of N0 status with chemoradiation compared to uh, chemotherapy alone. So what is the importance of N0 status? Well, still the rates of pathologic response are relatively low for both chemo and radiation. N0 status at surgery is highly prognostic. And I'll quote data again from David's group. Uh, Lizzie Smith reported uh, 340 resection specimens from the MAGIC trial. Yes, you do get improvement in overall survival if you respond, but in the multivariate analysis, only N0 status at surgery was independently prognostic for survival. So N0 drives the bus here. Pathologic response was not, respo was not prognostic for survival. And if you read between the lines, I found it very interesting in this report that if you were node negative, there was no difference in five-year overall survival if you were a responder or not a responder, 66 versus 72%. N0 drives the bus, and chemoradiation gets you to that status much better than chemotherapy alone. Local failure rates, many of these contemporary trials have only early follow-up. OEO5 reported 10 to 13% local failure. But if we look at the chemoradiation trials, comparing uh, chemoradiation versus chemo alone, a 20% reduction in uh, uh, local recurrence, and a head-to-head -head comparison of chemo-chemoradiation, a 20% improvement in local uh, recurrence compared to chemotherapy alone. Survival, uh, uh, pretty comparable across these different trials, uh, but um, uh, what we did learn that uh, ECF was no better than CF, FLOT is better than ECX, and chemoradiation is favored over surgery alone. So why include radiation? We get potential rates of R0 resection, potentially higher rates of path CR. We enhance the N0 status, and this may be even more important than pathologic response. We reduce local recurrence. That being said, FLOT is a better regimen than CF or ECX. And if we look again, we have to look at the results of contemporary trials. OEO5 and STO3 treated 1,700 patients and had very, very poor rates of R0 resection. Chemoradiation is better in achieving R0, but so is FLOT. Chemoradiation achieves higher responses and N0 status. These are the ongoing trials addressing the role of preoperative radiation, including Ezepec, which is FLOT versus CROSS, NeoAgis, FLOT versus CROSS, and Top Gear, which is uh, uh, perioperative now FLOT with or without radiation. So I think to conclude then in the neoadjuvant management of esophagus and G-junction cancers, chemoradiation is a standard alternative. If we're going to give chemotherapy alone, we should use FLOT, and comparative studies are pending. I would argue that R0 resection, path CR, and N0 status all favor the combination of chemoradiation over chemo alone, and we await on the horizon new agents, immunotherapy agents, genomic profiling, and PET imaging to help guide management. Thank you.